We recently learned that Coridon doesn't have wheels. So if these aren't wheels, then what are they? Coridon appears to be fairly reptilian, and I think these are actually specialized folds of skin called dewlaps. In the natural world, these are found in the Anole genus of lizards and are used for communication. So it's possible that Coridon is using these dewlaps to try and attract mates, establish territories, or maybe even to scare off predators. And in that same vein, there appears to be a similar structure formed by curling its tail around its back end. Displays such as this are often used to confuse predators so they don't really know which end is the front and which end is the back. This could also be similar to the Unkin response found in some salamanders and newts. This is an anti-predator response when the salamander feels threatened, they lift their head and their tail up simultaneously to reveal an often brightly colored underside. These bright colors usually signify that the animal is toxic to eat and they hope that the predator leaves them alone. It's possible that Coridon does a similar thing lifting its head and exposing its tail when it feels threatened. However, we see that when Coridon is swimming, these folds of skin also have another purpose and it's for buoyancy. Given that Coridon has webbed feet, it's possible that they live a semi-aquatic lifestyle, either foraging in the waters around the Paldea region or using them for transportation. Fish have a somewhat similar organ called a swim bladder that they can use to inflate or deflate to control their position in the water column. Maybe Coridon only inflates these sacs when it needs to swim and keep its buoyancy high enough that it remains on top of the water. If it needs to dive, it can then exhale or release air out of that sack, lowering its buoyancy and allowing it to descend. Additionally, this large fold of skin or sack of air could be a vocal sack similar to what is found in many modern day frogs and toads. This kind of organ would be used to advertise to potential mates by amplifying auditory signals loud enough that they could broadcast their availability to as large of an area as possible. Some frog calls can be heard somewhere between a half mile and a mile away, and given the large size of Coridon, it's possible that they could amplify these signals to a very large area, and possibly heard by mates many miles away. The final use, and probably the most bizarre for this fake wheel, is that it could be used to carry, transport, or house young. The males of the frog family Rhinodermatidae use their vocal sacs to scoop up their tadpoles to keep them safe until metamorphosis or to move them to new bodies of water. A similar behavior is found in modern day crocodilians in which the mother scoops up their young from the nest to carry them to the water body. In this case, the young are simply carried in the mouth instead of a specialized sack, but it's possible that Coridon could do one or the other. Hopefully this video helps shed some light on what this fake wheel is used for in the natural world of the Pokemon universe since it's not used to help you live out your Hot Rod fantasy in the Pokemon games. Have you guys seen Hot Rod? Is that a dead reference? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more videos on Pokemon biology and ecology, and let me know what you think of Coridon and his fake wheel in the comments. And until next time, happy researching!